What's up, everybody? It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com. I want to make a short video here talking about Santander, kind of giving you a little bit of update, kind of telling you some of the uh, situations that we're seeing coming into our office, uh, taking advantage of the demand letter. Uh, from the ones, uh, I don't get to see the ones of the people who uh, create uh, or type in their own information for the demand letter, but these are the people that have uh, taken advantage of the attorney uh, letter, where it's on the attorney letterhead, and the, the attorney is sending letter on behalf uh, for the individual making certain demands. And I just want to go over first what we're doing. Like, why are we doing this? Uh, it's because we believe that if you don't make your demands known, that really it's going to be a long time before anything comes to you, if anything. Uh, you, you could get lost in the shuffle. So uh, I came up with an idea to have a law firm that has worked with uh, different class action lawsuits, one of them was the underarm deodorant. That was one that they're, they're actually a part of. And, uh, and so they, they know when they read these how people can end up uh, either uh, qualifying by the way the settlement was done and also like an extending of what the company is saying that they're going to do moving forward in the future. And that's what had caught my eye. So uh, yes, if you're, you know, by the book, you could qualify, uh, but it's going to be slow and you might want to accelerate uh, what you have either coming to you or to get a debt collector off of your back. Because even though uh, some people had had debt uh, sold to debt collectors and they qualified for what was in the settlement, the debt collector is pretending like they don't know anything about it and they're trying to come after the people and garnish their wages. So what we did is with the demand letter uh, is the had attorney number one state to have any negative information removed off the credit reports. That's, that's number one. Number two, if they sold the debt to any debt buyer, the, the, the deficiency from the repo to have that forgiven and get that back from that debt collector, have them cease all collection activity. The uh, other thing is any money that was collected by a debt collector. They want that refunded because some people have been paying debt collectors because they were afraid of having uh, losing their job or something. So, uh, or they didn't show up to court and they got a default judgment. That money needs to be returned to uh, you if you're in that situation or anyone that was in that situation uh, solely because of the way the settlement was written. And that does not matter if you're not in the 34 states because they agree to certain things moving forward. And if you're not in the 34 states, I would suggest that you have the attorney draft a letter because number one, it's gonna bring you up to the top of the line. They're gonna take you more serious. Number two, there is another lawsuit uh, with the re remaining states in the pipeline. I know someone who works at Santander and he said that there's another lawsuit already in the pipeline. And what we're thinking is that that's for the remaining states. So this will just allow Santana to deal with yours so it don't stack on top and make the new lawsuit look worse than it already is right now. Uh, hold on one. All right, I had to take that text. That was from the wife. Uh, so what we're doing, and, and also the, the attorney is giving them 30 days to uh, answer to uh, answer to number one what was in the settlement number two to the demands that the attorney is uh, uh, making so when what we're doing is when we get the information this is what you need to have when you're going to make that demand is number one you need to have your account number so they know who you're dealing with uh, number two was the car repossessed uh, or do you still have a car because if you still had a car then it's basically asking for you to be able to have a debt forgiven and they send you the title. Uh, and then 
Number two, the amount owed on the vehicle if it was repossessed or if you still have it. And when the original date of your loan, that's all important. And also you can, we, we ask for some information about what, uh, how you feel whole, the, the whole deal, uh, how, how you're feeling with what's going on with your uh, Santander account. And that's what's going to take me into the next thing. When I've talked to people personally, uh, there was a gentleman yesterday, police officer that's on, that is, has been in the hospital for months, uh, spoke to him and that he had stated that number one, he was paying on the vehicle. He was paying on the vehicle, never missed a payment and had back surgery and he was still paying most of the payment in these Santander, what they did is they still came later and repoed the vehicle, even though he had an agreement with them. So they were taking money. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how much, but he was stating that he was paying the majority of the payment each month with an agreement on what they agreed to. So they were like, we know that you're going to be in the hospital. He was in the hospital, not had surgery and went home. He was in the hospital for months. Uh, ended up losing his home, living with family, and uh, but he was still saying, I need my car uh, when I get back going, and was paying them partial payments, and they still came and took the car later. Um, another uh, client from yesterday was making his payments, never missed a payment uh was driving on a suspended license and he took accountability for that they impounded the car he was still making the payments it was impounded he wanted to get the car out for some weird reason the impound service said that santander had to get the car out which was like incredible if your if your car is impounded you are you own the car just santander has a lien against the car but you own the car you would pay and get it out but what they did is they santander paid uh charged him a fee the, the fee was less than what it cost to get the car out they charged him fifteen hundred dollars and also they said because we're going to get it out of the impound we need to classify the car as a repo and they put the repo on his credit reports, even though the car was not repoed. Uh, and then he paid the fee, the $1,500 plus his monthly payment. So he still has not missed any payments on the car. Paid them their fee to get it out, what they charged for them to go and get the car out. Because, and I still don't have any answers on why that was, that had to happen. And he still paid them that, and it was on his credit reports as a repo. So what we're doing on his is, number one, want to try to see if some, some of that money can come back, because we don't even understand anything about that. And then also to try to get the car debt forgiven and have him get the title on the car. Now, let me go over some things that people are either comment on, comment on uh, YouTube or sending emails and or in my live chat. Uh, this is what they're saying. Santander is actually being proactive. And they are calling clients, either ones that they repoed or either, either ones that still have a car and they're trying to work out deals. One person, they said, uh, we know you owe uh, $15,000. We'll cut it in half when they're supposed to forgive the whole entire debt uh, on the balance. So they're calling other people saying, we'll refinance your car for one year and then we'll blow it back up at the high interest rate after one year. Other people are saying, you don't have to make payments for a couple of months and then in two months, you can start making payments. It's like they're just trying any type of way just to make people believe 
or to even just see if they even know about the settlement and get them to agree to something and then take them off the potential list of having any type of relief because they're going to say that they've already given them relief that that customer agreed to. So be careful. If you get a call from them, you need to notify them that you know about uh, the settlement and you want, if you have the car or if you promise to be posed, you want to have the debt forgiven, period. And then they're going to probably say, well, that's going to be handled by the attorney general because what they've been doing is sending it saying, call your attorney general. Your attorney general says that Santet calls Santander and then somebody will tell you to call Rusk, which is the administrator that's handling the, the uh, disbursements or what they're going to do with the lawsuit. And they haven't given anybody any answers. Uh, so it's better to make your own demands. If you can afford to do it, have an attorney do it because it's going to get stepped up. It's going to be taken more serious. Also, uh, I started something with this, like it's, it, an idea balloons up to all types of possibilities. There are people that are contacting attorneys in their areas and their attorneys are saying, yes, we can make this demand letter for you. So now you have validation from other attorneys that are saying, yes, we will make your a demand letter for you because this is something that is customarily done for clients of attorneys. Uh, benefit of using my company is that I already had paid uh, the firm to read over the case because no attorney is going to send a demand letter without reading over the uh, the case. And some of them charge different uh, amounts to be able to read over uh, the case thoroughly. They want to look at it from start to finish. What I did is I took care of that with the firm that I'm using, uh, paid it all even before we started doing the program, uh, got sat down with, with them and got their thoughts and, 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 and uh, prepared and then asked them, is this even logical to do? Yes. And they said that even with people that are not in the 34 states, because it's in, usually every state touches that every state that has a, joins with another state. And when they've had uh, cases, like I mentioned with the one with the underarm deodorant, uh, you can look that one up if you were ever used it. it was, uh, I forget which one it was, but it was bur actually burning people. Uh, one of my employees, Greg, if you've ever talked to Greg in my office, he had used that roll-on roll on deodorant and it burnt his underarms. And he got a settlement from, from that. Uh, and, and some people were not in any of the states that made the settlement, but because every state touches and they know that uh, I forgot the terminology that they use for it, but uh, adjoining states, they know that uh, next door state can end up, you know, starting a lawsuit. They don't even, basically, they don't even have to go through all of the trouble because they, they've already, in the 34 states, uh, said what they, uh, uh, what they were wrong for doing. This is just basically refiling and including your state. So that's what makes it possible for you, even if it's not in the 34 states, to easily send a demand letter, especially from an attorney, and have this, uh, have your uh, demands met because they know that it's going to be a losing battle and they don't want to go after, uh, if they get sued by different attorneys individually for people, it's going to cost way more than what they agreed to in the class action with the 34 states. So I'll end the video here. If you have any questions or uh, comments, please, uh, uh, you know, ask them. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, please share. Um, if you want to get the Santander the, uh, uh, demand letter, the links are below this video. Uh, you'll be able to get them. And if you, there's one for to do it yourself and one to have the attorney firm send it on your behalf. Uh, until next time, this is Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com, working from home today.